the coach from this championship team. He had a career record of 143 wins and just 21 losses, 87.2% success rate. He coached St. Louis Park to two Class AA state basketball championships in 1986 and 1990, two Class AA third places finishes in 87 and 89, and one state AA consolation championship in 1985. His team won five region six AA titles, one six AA runner-up, and four Lake Conference titles. He was the Metro Coach of the Year in 86 and 87. Also the Metro All-Star Coach, 87, 88, and 91. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Phil Furr. Tough act to follow that is, I'll tell you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight and congratulate all the Hall of Fame inductees, the two teams of distinction, and also our lifetime achievement winners. Now looking out over the audience here this evening, it looks like we're going to a basketball game because I can draw back about 25 years ago and see so many faces that supported our teams. And uh, it's just wonderful to see everyone back here again. As many of you know, St. Louis Park basketball program had a tremendous run during the late 70s and the early 80s. Park was represented in the state basketball tournament nine out of 13 years. Now maybe we got a little spoiled at St. Louis Park by winning so much, but nine out of 13 years. We were Hopkins before Hopkins was Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> the boys during that time were in three tournaments, three state tournaments and the girls were in six. The 1986 girls basketball state championship could not have been accomplished without the support of our coaching staff, Deb Wold, Corrine Melmer, the school and all of the community support. However, this group of girls just made it happen. They were pushed every day in practice by the reserves and they met every challenge and they were and they refused to lose. I'd like to recall just a few memories of our 1986 basketball season. As proved tonight, this team was highly intelligent. And it's scary when the players are a lot smarter than the coach. And that's what happened in this particular case. This team was ranked number one in the preseason polls after winning the Consolation Championship in 1985. Their record that particular year in 86 was 24 wins, two losses. The two losses that I was telling someone today, you don't remember the wins as coaches, but you remember the losses. And the, they're right out in front of me. We lost to Osseo by two points in overtime in a holiday tournament. Girls will remember that. But the one that they'll never forget is which one, girls? Richfield. You got it. <laughs> Richfield, a team that we had beaten by around 50 points the first time. And guess what? We lost by one point the second time we played them. So that tells you what, athletes, what athletics is about. It's one, you know, teams that can really go out and they want to win more than the other team. And that's what happened to us that particular night. We just were not ready to go. The region finals, we played Edina, and Edina was always a big rivalry for St. Louis Park. And we had a lot of things going on that year. For example, um, the Davidson sisters were playing against each other. We had one, fortunately the better one that night, Dinah had one, and I always remember Mama Davidson. She had that sweatshirt on, two different colors. One was Oriole color, and one was Edina color. So I'll recall that. And then another thing that comes up, in fact, I watched the tape just the other night just to kind of get my head back in it. And there was a turning play in that game, the region game, where we had taken Edina, we were leading pretty well through the whole game, except in the fourth quarter. They started to come back like a good team should. And there was one play that turned that game around. And I'll never forget, Carla Johnson saved a ball on the defensive end of the floor, kept it alive. We went down, shot the basket, missed the basket. Carla came down, rebounded the ball, falling basically out of, out of position, out of balance, shot the basket. With, uh, of course, there was time remaining, but that took the air out of Edina. It was a half-arbor shot, but not quite on her back. 
And then, of course, the pep fest that we always had when we were sent off to the, to the state tournaments. If I can. The school, there was so much pride and excitement. I mean, it just reverberated through the whole school. And we could never forget the cheerleaders that we had. We had all boy cheerleaders. The girls didn't seem like they wanted to follow along with us. But when it came to the state tournament, then we had to cut a few people. <laughs> and we kept the boys. Another thing that I recall vividly was Joel Anderson. Joel Anderson always had a cowbell, and he'd always bring it to the games. He got kicked out of just about every late conference gymnasium, <laughs> but he always got that cowbell in. And so that was good. There we go, bring that cowbell on. State tournament. We played Bemidji in the first game. We won that game. Then we played Burnsville the second game. Very, very tough basketball team during those years. Coached hard. But our girls came to play that night. We caused 32 turnovers in the game, and they had 14 points at halftime. I think the first four times, they could not get the ball over the midcourt line. That's how tough our girls were in that ball game. And then we went on to beat Highland Park in the girls state championship game before some 8,000 people, and mostly orange and black. And then last but not least was our welcome home ceremony at the high school, and it was emceed by Jeff Passel. After 27 years, Jeff, here we are again. Here we yeah? These memories and many other memories will always be remembered by the St. Louis Park community, the school, and lastly, the coaches. Thank you, girls, for everything. Phil just said to me as he was leaving the stage, and we haven't changed a bit in 27 years. I tease some of my friends. I, every time I see them, I wonder why their hair keeps getting darker and mine keeps getting whiter. But uh, next up is another uh, team of distinction for 2013, the class of 2013. You heard them talked about earlier because they're here in mass. The 1958 track team. And I'm going to announce some of these guys, and then we're going to get their coach up here to say a few words. Uh, Bob Erickson. Ed Gale couldn't be with us tonight, so accepting his team, Captain Tim Kiernan. Yeah, careful there. Uh, let's see. Also, Bill Kaufman and accepting his team captain, Art Patterson. It's easier if you walk around that way. Yeah. Accepting for Jim Kumpala is Carolyn Gade. Rod Lazorek. And uh, Doug Lowry, and accepting for him is Captain Rod Lazorek. Lynn Mattis, and accepting for Lynn is his son, Mike Mattis. Bob Owis, accepting for him, is uh, Brother Roger Owis. We mentioned Art Patterson. Bill Torp, the assistant coach, and accepting for Bill is the entire 1958 team. But right now, we want to hear from uh, the coach of these guys. He can tell you a little bit more about their background. Uh, you've heard a lot about him. He's a cross-country uh, coach whose teams won two state titles in 55 and 61, three Region 5, five District 18, three Lake Conference titles. Track and field teams won three state championships in 58, 62, and 63, three Region 5, five District uh, 18, and five Lake Conference and six indoor track and field titles he was inducted into the St. Louis Park Hall of Fame back in 2005. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Roy Griak.
told about uh, five minutes before the program that I had to say something about these young men <laughs> up here. But as they recall, and I have several former athletes sitting in the audience, this all culminated probably when they were in about the seventh grade because uh, we did not have a track team. We did not have a cross country team. And um, I would scour the physical education class to see if anybody could look like they could run. <laughs> I didn't care if they could run, I wanted them to be tough. And I got a Tory story tonight, I had them run 25 200s, but I don't believe they could run 25 200s. <laughs> And they said I was running backwards and giving them their time. No, 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 that's not true. <laughs> but as I look in the audience, I see several other state champions who probably were the forerunner of this group that's up here now. And I can tell you a little story about all of them. And um, I can tell you some good stories and some bad stories. <laughs> but their family. And um, they've remained the family all these years, as have Mortensen and Brown and Planico and all the other kids I've had on the teams, Jerry Brower, and there's so many of them out there who uh, led the way. And, uh, you know, it's not about me, it's about them. And I appreciated them uh, as I do today, probably more than ever. Um, so if you can picture these guys when they were in the seventh grade and coming out with baggy orange uniforms, uh, there were hand-me-downs from the basketball team. <laughs> and we would uh, jog out to a Brookside golf course, about uh, 80 of them, uh, st struggling along, running through lawns, getting chased by the guards over at Meadowbrook Golf Course because they wanted to keep us off the course. <laughs> but uh, we continued and persevered and did a good job. Uh, every one of these young men um, remain friends. They get together several times a year, and I admire them from that. After they graduated from the university, I mean, from St. Louis Park High School, they continued to have their own Olympic Games. They had a program, flag raising ceremonies. They even had winter games, at which I had to go, and they damn near killed me. Every time. <laughs> but I remember those times. I can remember Erickson, Bob, who was a discus thrower, strong young man who had a gift to throw the discus. I can't tell you right now how far he threw but he was a fine athlete. Eddie Gale, he was a quarter miler. Um, tall, gangly kid who ran the 400, 440 in the mile relay team. Jim Kumpala, who was a rather a, kind of a phenom. He was a state champion. Uh, I remember the state championship meet at Memorial Stadium. He ran out of lane eight. And it had rain, big puddles on the track, and he still won, the, won his event at lane eight. <laughs> and Jim is deceased, as is Bill Kaufman, who is a quarter miler, 440 meter runner, a dash runner. I get confused in yards and meters even today. I was a diligent worker and a fantastic kid. Tim Kiernan, tall, skinny little guy, <laughs> who I made a hurdler out of him. 
and was a damn good hurdler. And um, was a real point getter. All these guys placed get points in the state meet. And Rattler Zorick, you know, they lived over behind Miracle Mile, mom and dad. Everybody, if you want to meet any of these guys, you go to the Zorics. And they always met over there, and that was the, where they met the girls and met the guys and had a good time. And I still remember fondly Mrs. Lazorek made t-shirts for all these guys. I still have that orange and black t-shirt in my pocket. <laughs> and Rod's dad was the baker at the uh, Cafe de Napoli. And we'd all go down there and eat all that bread and that good spaghetti every now and then. <laughs> Doug Laurie was a triple long jumper. He ran a sub 440 in the ninth grade at the Carlton Relays. And if any of you people ever ran on the Carlton Relays, they had a long straightaway with two curves, and he did. And I got a, kind of a story about Doug. We were coming back from the meet, and Doug was snucking back in the back row. He was only junior high. So I went back there. He had a girly magazine back there. I took it away from him. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Mattis was a short little guy. His son is here today, deceased. And a diligent worker was a low hurdler for me. Terrific kid, Bobby Oates. Fun story about Bob, when he was about the eighth grade or seventh grade, we had a cross country meet at um, Lake Nokomis. And I took got all those little, little chickens on the bus coming home from the meet, got back to St. Louis Park, and no O's, he was still back there at Lake Nokomis. I left him there. <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, he uh, had an uncle, I think, that lived by Lake Nokomis, so we were able to rescue him from his uncle. <laughs> and Art Patterson, uh, a unique and very gifted runner, uh, Art set the state record. Interesting story, I ran in the state meet in 1942 against a guy, a guy by the name of Ralph Ferrin who was a state champion, he set the state record at 157.5. And uh, Art broke his record. I ran against this guy, and I think I ended up fourth in the state meet. And uh, he was a phenomenal runner, he was about six foot four. All I saw was cinders at that time. But Art broke his record, so I got him. It took me about 50 years to get him, but I got him. <laughs> Through Art. And Art set the state record on that particular day. I can't say enough about my assistant coach, Bill Torp, who is uh, my assistant coach, who is deceased and later became a doctor. And um, I have fond memories of Bill and all the young men who have passed away and are here today. So. Uh, my head is off to them. I want to give them all a big applause. I just have one little aside. Uh, on Coach Greg. When I was uh, in seventh grade, or thereabouts, <clears throat> uh, most of these guys were on the cross country team, so as any seventh grader, I said, well, that sounds like a good idea. So <clears throat> I went out for the cross country team. Well, you can probably see that wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> and this lasted a probably a week, and Coach called me into the office, said, Bob, 
thanks for coming out, but there's somebody I'd like you to meet. And he introduced me to the football coach. <laughs> <laughs> Thus ended my cross-country career. Um, all right, so next up, we have the induction of the class of 2013. All right, <laughs> class of 63, Jerry Brower. You have a notebook? You have a notebook? Yeah. Let me tell you a little bit about Jerry. We had the pages out of order. <laughs> Thank God you know what you're doing, Jerry. Uh, Jerry was a four-time letter winner in track and a two-time letter winner in football and a three-year letter winner in basketball where he was a member of the 1962 Boys State Basketball uh, Championship team. However, it was in track where Jerry excelled as an athlete for St. Louis Park. He was a three-year participant in the state meet. In 1961, he was a member of the second place 880 yard relay team. In 62, he was a member of the third place 880 yard relay team. And he finished second in the 180 yard low hurdles. The St. Louis Park was also the team champion in 62 under coach Roy Griak. In his senior year, he was a member of the state champion mile relay team and he placed first and set a new meet record in the 180 yard low hurdles. The St. Louis Park was also the team champion in 62 under coach Roy Griak. In his senior year, he was a member of the state champion mile relay team, and he placed first and set a new meet record in the 180-yard low hurdles. St. Louis Park repeated as state champion in 63. In the spring of 63, Jerry was ranked as the number one indoor low hurdler in the nation in a national high school track publication. In basketball, Jerry was named honorable mention in 1963 for the Lake Conference. He was also a tri-captain of that team. Jerry went on to run for Coach Griak for three years at the University of Minnesota and was fourth in the Big Ten hurdles. Jerry's married to Maureen. They have six children, Stephanie, Christy, Chris, Tom, Steph, and uh, Megan. Uh, maybe that's Steve. Is that Steven? No? Steph? Anyway, 15 Steph. grandchildren. There you go. Two Stephs. Two Stephs in there. Congratulations <laughs> to Jerry Brower, class of 1963. Not his fault. I got a. I, all right, thanks, Jerry. Congratulations. I got a feeling Mick wrote this thing. All right, let's see. Uh, let, let's see what kind of hurdles are in the next one. Ronnie Dacus, the class of 1967. Ron was a two-year letter winner in football and a three-year letter winner in track, and he excelled in both sports. In football, Ron was a running back who averaged 5.5 yards per carry, scored 10 touchdowns of 50 yards or more during his junior and senior years. He led the Lake Conference in kickoff and punt returns for touchdowns, and he was third in the conference in scoring. In 1966, Ron was team captain, team MVP, all Lake Conference, and all state honorable mention. In the three years Ron ran track from 1965 to 67, the St. Louis Park track team won every meet it entered except when they finished in fourth place at the state meet in 67. Ron was part of a state championship teams of uh, 65 and 66 though. The Star Tribune called the 1965 team the greatest high school track team ever assembled. Ron ran on the 1966 880 relay team that placed third at state. As a senior, he finished fifth in the 100 yard dash and eighth in the 220 yard dash at the state meet. Ron was captain of the track team his senior year, and Coach Orv Bice, uh said he was without question the finest team captain I have ever had in my years of coaching. Ron's currently an avid golfer where his great speed does him no good whatsoever. <laughs> I'm there with you. You've got to slow that swing down, don't you? Ron's married to Tony. They have two children, Carly and Alex. Congratulations to Ronnie Dacus, class of 57. Next up from the class of 1966, Frank Howard. Frank was an outstanding football player and track and field athlete at Park. He was a two-year letter winner in football. He was co-captain of the 65 team and was named All-Lake Conference, All-Region 5, and named to the Star Tribune All-State football team. 
He was also named to the National Football Hall of Fame as a scholar-athlete in 1965. Frank was a three-year letter winner in track and field. He was encouraged to throw the discus by Coach Roy Griak and was coached by Gordy Wyrock. In his senior year, he was the Lake Conference champion and Region 5 champion. In the state meet on his final throw of qualifying, he threw 171 feet, two and a half inches to set a new state record and win the state championship by one inch. His first place finish helped St. Louis Park win the team championship under uh, Coach Orbeis. Uh, Frank went on to play football for two years at Dartmouth College and continued to throw the discus. He set the Dartmouth College record with a toss of 179 feet 10 inches and placed 11th at the NCAA track and field tournament at Drake University. He was named to the All Ivy League track and field team in 1970. Frank takes personal responsibility for the great shooting range of Stan Veeker by consistently losing games of horse in Stan's driveway. <laughs> Bit of a road to get there, but it worked, I guess. <laughs> Frank met his wife Gretchen when they were in seventh grade at Central Junior High, and they have two children, Megan and Tracy. Congratulations, Frank Howard, class of 1962. This is the discus I threw. Look at that. Gordy Wywark gave it to me after the throw. Gordy gave him that discus after the throw. Yeah, this is the actual one. How about that? Seventh grade, Mr. Griak came over and said, Frank, I want you to throw the discus for Mr. Griak. And I said, I wonder who Mr. Griak is. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> All right, from the class of 57, Roger Plantical. Roger was a two-sport athlete during his years at Park. He was a three-year letter winner in track and a four-year letter winner in basketball. As a junior, Roger was the Lake Conference and outstate meet high jump champion. In his senior year, Roger was the District 18 shot put champion and set a District 18 record with a high jump of five feet, 10 and a half inches. However, it was in basketball where Roger made the biggest impact. He started for the varsity as a freshman. In his sophomore year, he was named All Lake Conference and to the All Region 5 team. He served as captain in his junior year and again was named All Conference, All District 18 and All Region 5. He was also named as Dell Basketball Magazine All-American. As a senior tri-captain, he led Park to a 14-0 undefeated regular season and a Lake Conference Championship. In the District 18 tournament, Park defeated Chaska, Wyzetta, and Minnetonka. And in the first round of the Region 5 tournament, Park lost to the eventual state champion, Roosevelt. In his senior year, Roger was named All-Lake Conference, All-District 18, All-Region 5, WCCO All-State, and Dell Basketball Magazine All-American. Roger scored over 1,000 points during his four-year basketball career. He's a psychotherapist. He lives in Greentown, Pennsylvania. He married Nancy, who is also a 57 Park graduate. And they have four daughters, Deborah, Kimberly, Lisa, and Thane, nine grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. Congratulations to Roger Plantikow. From the class of uh, 1995, Claire Goldstein Swanson. Claire, Claire was a four-year letter winner in swimming and diving, a four-year letter winner in gymnastics, and a six-year letter winner in synchronized swimming. Claire was an all-lake conference diver in 1994 and set a pool record in her senior year. She was captain of the swimming and diving teams in both her junior and senior years. In gymnastics, Claire was again team captain in her junior and senior years and was named All-Lake Conference Honorable Mention in her senior year. It was in synchronized swimming where Claire truly excelled under coach Sally Callahan. Park won five state championships during her six years on the team. She was captain of the team in 1995. And while they did not win the state championship her senior year, she was part of three groups that won state championships in team, trio, and duet competitions. She was named All-State. Claire also won the 1995 Mercury Award as the best female Jewish athlete in the metro area. All these accomplishments are even more amazing considering her dad, Mickey Goldstein, never jumped more than six inches off the ground for a rebound <laughs> <laughs> in his life. <laughs> oh, I'm just reading this stuff. After high school, Claire attended Dartmouth College where she graduated with a BA in government. She lettered as a diver while at Dartmouth. She has completed three Ironman triathlons and has run in several marathons and triathlons.
Claire currently lives in St. Louis Park with husband Matthew. Uh, rather than running marathons and triathlons, Claire now keeps busy with her five children, all under the age of eight. <laughs> twins Eleanor and Noah. <laughs> Listen, twins Eleanor and Noah, twins Clark and Maxwell, and Louise. Louisa. Very good, and congratulations to Claire Goldstein. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm saying his name right from the class of 66. Bill Tariquez? Tariquez. Bill lettered in track and football while at Park. He was a running back for the 65 football team. He was on two state championship track teams in 65 and 66, captain of the 1966 team. During his senior year, he set a school record in the 330-yard dash and a state record in the 600-yard dash. At the Lake Conference meet, he was on three championship relay teams, the 440-yard relay, the 880-yard relay, and the mile relay. During the season, he set four school records. At the state meet, he placed fourth in the 220-yard dash, breaking Mike Gillum's school record. He also ran on the 880-yard relay team that finished third. He also qualified for two national junior championship track meets. After high school, Bill competed in football and track at Carleton College. He was a two-year starter at running back and was all-conference in track. He helped set school records in the 440-yard relay and the 880-yard relay. Bill has also had a distinguished career as a football and track coach and as a college administrator. He coached football and track at Riverdale High School in Muskoka, Wisconsin. He also coached 13 years at Eden Prairie High School, where he was named 1982 Minnesota State High School Track Coach of the Year. In 84, Bill became the men's athletic director, cross-country coach, track coach, and alpine ski coach at Carleton College. And he was named the NCAA Regional Coach of the Year twice in cross country and MIAC Coach of the Year in track and cross country. After retiring from Carleton in 2006, Bill went back to coaching at Eden Prairie High School from 2007 to 2011. He was inducted into the Eden Prairie Athletic Hall of Fame in 2002 and into the Carleton College Hall of Fame in 2010. He's now retired and living in Eden Prairie. He has one son, Trent, and his first grandson was born in July. Congratulations to Bill Tarika. I'm warm. Things must be heating up in here. I'm getting hot. All right. Steve Thompson from the class of 1967. Steve was a three-sport athlete at Park. He excelled in all three sports. Uh, Steve lettered in track in 66 and 67, and he placed in the 1967 state meet in the shot put as well. In wrestling, Steve lettered in 1966 and 67, was captain of the team in 67, and placed second at the state meet in the heavyweight division. One of Coach Bob Roy's most significant accomplishments as the head football coach at St. Louis Park was to convince band director Mervyn Lysing to release Steve from his duties as the third trombone in the marching band. <laughs> But the marching band's loss was the football team's gain. Steve was a three-year letter winner in football, captain of the 1966 team. He was voted the most valuable defensive player, named All-Lake Conference, All-Metro, All-State, and received the All-American Award in 1966. Steve was recruited by 25 Division I colleges and universities, and he played four years at the University of Minnesota. He was also named Honorable Mention All-Big Ten in 1970, and he still holds the team record for most fumbles recovered in a season and for a career. Steve says he owes a great deal to the coaches at St. Louis Park for his success as an athlete and as a person. And he'd like to especially thank Coach Roy, Coach Raleigh Hanks, Coach Lyle Hanks, Coach Bombeck, Coach Wyrock, and Coach Wilhite for all they did for him. Steve's married to Susan. They have four children, Sarah, Kirsten, John, and Matthew. Congratulations to Steve Thompson. One quick word of thanks again to Bob Roy and the great staff he put together over the years. Many of us here owe absolutely everything to Coach Roy and his, and his staff. And can't thank you enough, and I can't thank St. Louis Park enough. 
Congratulations. Our next inductee you're going to be seeing on the sidelines this weekend when the Vikings take on one of their rivals, the Chicago Bears. Mark Tressman, the class of 1974. Mark played football, basketball, and baseball during his years at St. Louis Park. He's considered one of the best quarterbacks to ever play for Park. He was named All-Lake Conference and All-State in 73. He was also a two-year letter winner in both basketball and baseball. In 74, Mark won the Mercury Award for being the top Jewish athlete in the Twin Cities. After high school, Mark played football at the University of Minnesota for three years and for one year at Minnesota State University, Moorhead. While Mark may be most famous for being mentioned in an episode of 30 Rock, he's had a very successful coaching career since graduating from law school at the University of Miami in 1982. In 1983, he was named the quarterback coach at the University of Miami. He coached Bernie Kosar in Miami, won the national championship in January of 84. He's been the quarterback coach and the offensive coordinator for several NFL teams, including the Vikings, Tampa Bay, Cleveland, San Francisco, Detroit, Arizona, Oakland, and Miami. He's worked with some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, including Bernie Kosar, Scott Mitchell, Jake Plummer, Wade Wilson, Rich Gannon, and Steve Young. Several of these quarterbacks had their best seasons while being coached by Mark. Rich Gannon was named the most valuable player in the NFL under Mark's coaching. In 2007, Mark was named head football coach of the Montreal Alouettes of the Canadian Football League. He led the team to back-to-back -to -back Grey Cup championships in 2009 and 2010, was named Coach of the Year in the CFL in 2010. And in January of 2013, Mark was named head coach of the Chicago Bears. As I mentioned, he's unable to attend tonight because of his current coaching commitment. We'd like to wish Mark the best of luck in his new position, except for maybe a couple times a year when he's playing the team in purple. <laughs> but look at this, this this way. If, if things aren't going well for the Vikings against him, you can still feel good at the end of the game. <laughs> Mark's the only active Jewish head coach in the National Football League. And Mark is uh, every Jewish mother's nightmare, a lawyer who became a football coach. <laughs> Mark is married to Cindy, and they have two children, Sarah Ann and Chloe. And we congratulate Mark Tressman and his parents who are here to accept for him tonight. And we're really proud. Yeah, we're extremely proud of what Mark has accomplished. And they're in first place. Next up from the class of 1990, <laughs> Barb Gordon-Williams. Barb participated in soccer and track during her years at Park, but it was in basketball where she earned her credentials for the Hall of Fame. In three of her four years on the varsity, Park qualified for the state tournament. She was a four-year letter winner and was co-captain and co-most valuable player of the team her senior year. Barb, along with co-captain Jill Anderson, led St. Louis Park to the 1990 state basketball championship. Along with uh, Rachel Henriksen, Bart helped dominate the paint during their run to the state championship. For the 1989-1990 season, Barb was named All-Conference, All-Metro Center, Center All-State Center, MVP of the state final game against Elk River, and she was a finalist for Miss Basketball of Minnesota. In her senior year, she led the team in scoring rebounds and block shots. And she'd like to thank Coach Furk and Coach Wool for all of their con contributions to her success. She'd also like to thank all of her incredible teammates during her four years on the basketball team. Barb went on to play four years at Iowa State University where she was co-captain in her senior year. At the end of her career at Iowa State, Barb was second on the all-time list for both rebounds and block shots. Barb is currently a pre-kindergarten teacher and has coached several girls traveling basketball teams for St. Louis Park. She's married to Anthony. They have four boys, Anthony, Keegan, Tariq, and Tristan. Congratulations to Barb Gordon, class of 1990. From the class of 1982, Chris Wold. Chris was a three-year letter winner in both soccer and basketball. In soccer, Chris was a two-year starter at halfback or fullback. And in 1981, the team lost in the region finals. Chris was a three-year starter in basketball. In his sophomore year, the team participated in the 1980 state tournament. 
In the quarterfinals, Park defeated top-ranked St. Paul Central in one of the most exciting games in Park history. Park lost to Minneapolis North in the semifinals and defeated Duluth East for third place. In his senior year, Chris was team captain, MVP in All Lake Conference, a Mr. Basketball nominee, and a McDonald's All-America nominee. In 1982, Chris was named runner-up as the Varsity Magazine Tom McCann National Scholar Athlete of the Year. Chris would especially like to thank Coach Augie Schmidt for all of his efforts in helping to make him a better basketball player and a better person. Chris played and lettered four years at St. Olaf College. He was named the most improved player in 1983 and was the leading scorer and captain in his senior year. And Chris joins his father, Darrell, as the second father-son members of the St. Louis Park Athletic Hall of Fame. And Chris is a serious recreational road cyclist and an avid competitive cyclocross racer. He's a professor of international environmental law at Lewis and Clark Law School in Portland, where he lives with his wife, Sue, and their two sons, Zach and Mats. Congratulations, Chris Wold. And now I believe we're moving on to the Oriel Lifetime Achievement Awards. First up, the Oriel Lifetime Achievement Award is being presented for the first time tonight. This award recognizes those who have given uh, notorious uh, service to St. Louis Park athletics or to athletics in general. George Hahn, the class of 1950, has the honor of being the first recipient of the Oriel Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> Through his career in the Park and Rec's department, George will long be remembered for helping making St. Louis Park a great city to live in, beautiful parks, facilities, trails, great programs for young and old alike. And his award reads as follows. In recognition and appreciation for your energy and vision directing the St. Louis Park Parks and Recreation Department, during your distinguished career, you developed many outstanding youth programs, improved facilities, introduced sports clinics, and coordinated city programs with the St. Louis Park School District, contributing to the success of both city programs. On a personal note, I came to know George many, many years ago when I dated his daughter, Rayanne, who's here tonight. <laughs> And they took me in like a member of their family, and uh, George always made sure, as Mick said, that we had jobs in the summertime so we could have a couple of bucks to take somebody to a movie or something. Uh, but George also said to me before tonight's uh, program, he said, I want you to make sure you emphasize one thing. He said, this award isn't about me. This award is about we. Uh, he says there's a whole bunch of people here tonight, a whole bunch of people who worked underneath him that it couldn't have happened without all of them being involved, too. He was a great conduit for everything athletics in St. Louis Park. And I can't tell you, on behalf of our family, how much you appreciate taking all of my mom's phone calls complaining that there weren't enough hockey rinks. <laughs> so. And I know you got those phone calls. Yeah. Congratulations to George Hall. I'm going to see mom and dad tomorrow up the lake. I'll have to tell her, quit calling George and complaining about hockey rinks. <laughs> Next up is uh, Carol Banbury Schulman. She's a class of 1958. The large crowd representing the... Uh, <laughs> the entourage representing the class of 58 has had a lot of cheering tonight. Uh, first, their 58 state champion track and field team. Secondly, for their classmate. Carol Banbury Schulman, who has made her classmates proud through her many achievements in figure skating worldwide. And her Oriel Lifetime Achievement Award reads as follows. In recognition and appreciation for your devotion and commitment to figure skating, a sport with deep Minnesota roots, following an elite skating career, you served as coach of the Rochester, Minnesota Figure Skating Club and as executive director of the U.S. Professional Skaters Association, editing the Professional Skaters magazine, and authoring the complete book of figure skating. In addition to serving as the world professional figure skating judge, 
and as a technical director to professional skating events in the U.S., Canada, and France. You also directed and produced 14 U.S. Open professional skating competitions for national television. In 2002, your many contributions recognize you as one of the 25 most influential people in the world of figure skating and a career highlight induction into the World Coaches Hall of Fame in 2010. So it's only fitting that you receive this Oriole Lifetime Achievement Award. Carol Banbury Schulman. So there you have it, another special night, and I just want to tell you how honored I am to come up here and uh, be a part of uh, everything that is happening here when it comes to St. Louis Park Athletics. Uh, my high school athletic career, I would guess, could be summed up as mediocre at best, but it sure was a lot of fun to be able to play all those sports uh, and have brothers who were constantly uh, striving to make sure that I was looked out for, and friends too friends who are still my friends today, and faces that I haven't seen in many, many years, but I see now and I can name them all off, and immediately it brings back a great memory. So thanks for uh, letting me share a part of your evening here tonight, and having the honor and the privilege of introducing these great, great people from this great, great high school. Thanks so much.